हेलो एवरीवन अ वेरी वॉम वेलकम टू ऑल ऑफ यू टू येट अनदर कॉन्सेप्ट क्लासेस फॉर सोशोलॉजी ऑप्शनल बाय सुन आई एस एंड फ्रेंड्स टुडे गोइंग टू टॉक अबाउट अ वेरी वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट कॉन्सेप्ट दैट इज क्लासिकल एलिट थ्योरी एंड दिस कॉन्सेप्ट इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट दिस थ्योरी इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट बिकॉज टाइम एंड अगेन यू हैज बीन आस्किंग क्वेश्चन फ्रॉम दिस पर्टिकुलर टॉपिक and here i'll be talking about various features of this classical elite theory apart from that thing i'll also be talking about two very pronounced you know sociologists who are you know uh, related with classical elite theory who propounded this classical elite theory and that is wilfredo pareto and gaetano mosca now before i start with the session i just want to tell you this classical elite theory basically we uh, you know study this in paper 1 unit 7 that is politics and society there we have a sub section that is sociological theory of power where we have, where we have lots and lots of theories with respect to the power theory where we have weber theory we have uh, you know functionalist theory we have pluralist theory we have marxist neo marxist state centered theory okay post modernist theory and one of them is also the elite theory okay so now let's start with the session so before i look into what are the different features of the uh, you know this classical elite theory i just want to tell you in a very simple language who are elites so elites are basically a group of or you can say small group of people who are very much influential and wealthy and controls disproportionate amount of power and resources okay there are small group of people who are very much influential and wealthy and control disproportionate amount of power and resources just like you can give an example of political elites who are actually ruling the roost as far as you know taking any kind of a decision that will have a wider impact on the society okay their decisions are final just like uh, you know chief ministers prime ministers okay or the cabinet ministers at the state level or the central level okay just like you can also talk about the elites in the economic uh, you know arena that is economic elites who control all the means of productions just like they have the technology they have uh, you know capital they have land factory everything they control just like you can give an example of also elon musk right he has lot of money riding his back so what happened these are basically elites now here before uh, you know i talk, uh, go into all these features i just want to add one more thing here that overall if you look into the classical elite theory they had certain notions okay and what are those notions they believe that uh, you know the power in the society is basically monopolized by a small group of people that is minority okay power is monopolized by a small group of people who are basically in minority who are basically in minority right and so overall society is divided into two parts basically or two sections that is minority who are basically elites only and the majority basically the common people okay this is basically a very basic notion with respect to the classical elite theory now here na let's start with the various important features and remember all these features are basically also the features of the wilfred pareto and gaetano mosca then i'll be talking about in detail 
about the Pareto view and then Mosca view. Okay, so now let's start with one by one. First one is inevitability. Inevitability. Now here, both Pareto and Mosca, okay, they believe that elite rule is inevitable. Okay, elite rule is inevitable. So when they had this notion that any elite rule is inevitable, so they completely dismiss the possibility of any kind of proletariat revolution. elite rule is inevitable so no proletariat revolution if you have read Karl Marx uh, you might uh, be you know knowing the fact that uh, how he says that uh, history of society is the history of class struggle between you know uh, you know uh, the people who are who owns the means of production and who doesn't own the means of production so there is always a conflict in the society so what happened in the capitalist society there will be a revolution which will be you know uh, you can say pushed by the proletariat it will be uh, you can say uh, you know driven by the proletariats and it will be against the bourgeoisie uh, domination and ultimately there will be a communist form of society developed where it will be a complete classless society right so the elites always believe that there will be no proletariat revolution because in every kind of society the elites will ultimately rule the society okay so there is no proletariat revolution and thus this elite theorist they were basically talking against marxist notion because they always talk about the proletariat revolution right apart from this thing uh, you can also talk about the fact that as per classical elite theory it is not desirable to you know end the elite rule why because it is inevitable it is not desirable to end or you can say to make an attempt to end to make an attempt to end elite rule why because it is inevitable okay next is the basis of elite rule the basis of elite rule now here both Wilfred Pareto and Gaetano Mosca they believe that the elite rules elite rules because they have certain superior personal qualities that is why they are different from common people okay they have certain uh, you know superior personal qualities certain superior personal qualities just like if i have to give an example pareto says and he talks about you know circulation of elites where i'll be talking about the circulation of elite you know in the in com uh, in coming few minutes so pareto basically talks about circulation of elites and it gave two terminology lions and foxes okay and lions he says that these people are lions why because they have certain uh, you can say personal qualities that they are very much decisive right they are decisive they are very much conservative right plus they are very much you can say uh, use the uh, you can say uh, coercive force to rule coercive force to rule they are not hesitant to use the coercive force while foxes are very much you know good in manipulating things they are very much deceitful okay they could easily manipulate people okay while mosca says that elites are different why because they have good organizational abilities good organizational abilities right so this is basically the basis of elite rule next is 
the characteristics of elite versus common masses this is also very easy i'm just going to remove everything now if you look into the elite characteristics versus the common mass now the elites are those who have definitely some superior personal qualities but at the same time they are more organized and more cohesive group more organized more cohesive group while the common man are very much unorganized and very much fragmented okay elites are very much organized though they are in minority where they are very much organized very much united this high degree of solidarity so that is why they form a kind of cohesive group while here common men they are very much unorganized fragmented they are not even aware of the fact that they belong to a single uh, you can say group that is common you know uh, common population so that is the characteristics of elites versus the common mass next is the shared background of elites when we talk about the shared background of the elite basically elites are the people who have the common background right what are the common background they basically are wealthy they have same values primarily they have same values they enjoy the same privileges right apart from that thing they come from you know top echelons of come from top echelons of you can say administration government administration schools or you can say education institution you can talk about the mass media right all these things so these are the common background of the elites and remember all these features that i've talked about these features are basically uh, you know the features given by the or shared by the wilfred pareto and gaetano mosca only right so inevitability basis of elite rule characteristics of elite versus common mass shared background of elite these are very easy friends there is no rocket science involved here and here you need to understand one thing that when i talk about the elites elites always look forward look to perpetuate their you know interest so even in a democratic form of government it might seem that the ultimate uh, ultimate uh, you can say uh, you know control lies with the common people but it is the uh, you know elite only who is who are calling all the shots okay decisions are taken to give a to give a kind of an illusion that they are being taken uh, in the interest of the common people but ultimately they are being taken to perpetuate the interest of the elites only okay they are being decision are being taken to perpetuate the inter interest of elites only and elites generally see okay because i have uh, told you that uh, common people are very much unorganized very much fragmented so elite are always able to rule the over the majority of the population why because of the fact that majority of the population they are very much not uh, you know they are very much disinterested or unconcerned with the daily issues of the life okay they are very much unconcerned with the uh, you can say uh, daily issues right so this is how you can talk about the uh, common features now we will talk about the fact wilfred pareto view okay wilfredo pareto view now here wilfred pareto what he says that he talks about circulation of elite and he says that history of society consists of one type of elite continuously being replaced by another type of elite okay so that is why there is a kind of terminology that he propounded that is circulation of elites right and here he uh, you know gave a kind of a classification if i have to draw uh, you know a proper a kind of a you can say flow chart so i'll just tell you that wilfred pareto basically says that uh, there are elites and non elites i'll just draw it for you wilfred pareto he says that there are elites then there are non elites under elites only there are governing elites 
and there are non governing elites now governing elites are important because they have you know very much greater influence on the day to day administration of the state right so they directly or indirectly influence the state administration and under this governing elites we have foxes and lions okay and this foxes and lions these concepts are have been borrowed by uh, you know wilfred pareto from a very renowned italian philosopher that is niccolo machiavelli remember that thing also that is also very good fact now here i'll remove everything so under circulation of elite we have two just like i've shown you the uh, you know flow chart here we have foxes and we have lions foxes and lions now foxes are the people who have certain qualities so you know a very uh, special personal qualities like they are very good at manipulation okay they are very deceitful shrewd apart from that thing they are you know good in innovating things they are ne uh, never shy of experimenting out experimentation they carry out experimentation okay and they hesitate to use coercive force okay you can connect it with uh, if you have read the sociology or sociological theory of power you can connect it with you know new marxist and you know gramsci also where he says that elites or you know the people who are ruling the society they are not able to rule only and only on the basis of coercive forces but they also have to make certain amount of concession so they are also manipulating the you can say sentiments of the common people so you can connect with that thing also here as far as lions are concerned they are very much conservative right they basically follow old traditions and norms okay they are you know not innovative at all apart from that thing other uh, things that you can talk about is that they are you no know, they use coercive force they are very much decisive okay these are basically the characteristics of the lions and foxes and lions these are the kind of categories given by the wilfred pareto and remember one thing always that lions and the foxes they you know keep on you can say checkmating each other sometimes for some certain period of time the foxes will rule other certain period of time the lions will rule just like uh, you, you can say that it's a kind of a cyclical theory okay and it is completely against the linear theory of you can say karl marx where he said that was the uh, revolution takes place proletarian revolution takes place in the capitalist society so ultimately it will leads to herald you know it will leads to the formation of communist society and there in communist society it will be a complete classless society when it will be a complete classless society what happens uh you know all the resources will be owned uh, commonly by the members of the community so there will be no inequality right there uh, you know uh, the further progression of the society he basically doesn't talk about there uh, the evolution of society ends but here it is kind of goes on keeps on going in a cyclical cyclical manner okay it's not that fox once the fox rules then lions will never come to power But rather it's fox lions then fox then lions okay just like that and here suppose for certain period of time foxes are ruling so what happen is that these foxes when they rule for certain period of time the people uh, you know they'll get frustrated by their ideologies just like you know they'll uh, they will be lot of kind of corruption okay there will be lot of corruption apart from that thing uh, you can also talk about the fact uh, you know that uh, these people uh, they will keep on manipulating keep on manipulating the sentiments and the wishes of the people so when they keep on uh, manipulating uh, 
the sentiments of the people it will also ultimately leads to kind of instability so because of instability and corruption people will ultimately replace them by lions and lions will take the opportunity and replace the foxes and when the lions will come who will rule the you know who will rule using the coercive forces so people will over the period of time what will happen they'll get frustrated by the lion rule also why because they never innovate so there'll be a kind of what there'll be a kind of you can say social stagnancy there'll be a kind of decadence because of lack of innovation so this opportunity will be seized by the foxes and ultimately the lions will again come back to power so this is how we can talk about the fact and every time when fox and the lions they are replacing each other a new social political order is basically coming into existence leading to kind of a social equilibrium again at least social equi equilibrium will be established for a certain period of time okay so this is overall you can talk about the wilfred pareto now next let's talk about gaetano mosca now gaetano mosca also held the same view and he says just like inevitability that elite rule is inevitable is in evitable and the elites are those who have good elites are those who have good organizational abilities right and here uh, mosca also added to the fact that uh, you know different society have different kind of elite why because the nature of society when the nature of society overall changes the uh, you know the kind of elites also change so different kind of society have different kind of elites okay just like if you have a very primitive society what will happen is that the people who can have very good hunting skill because if you have a very good hunting skill what happens you can kill the animals and that's thus you'll be able to uh, you can say you know feed the whole tribal people your own community members so those who have a very good hunting skills they are elites right or you can say when you talk about uh, you know uh, like in the modern era only the people who have really good knowledge okay and uh, just like we say that earlier it was hunting skills right then later if you, if, if you talk about you know feudal society people who have lands they are considered elites in you know in uh, industrial modern industrial society people who have control over the economic power who have economic power they were elites right just like a given example so that you can understand today people who have knowledge just like we have data is the new oil so people who have knowledge immense knowledge they are the people who are the elites okay so this is how you can talk about a uh, different kind of elites over the different kind of society and he also said the fact that even in democracy even in democracy ultimately what happens though it uh, shows a kind of an illusion that uh, the complete control lies with the common people but it is the elite only who are ruling because over the period of time an elite a uh, small group of minority holds the power okay over you can say disorganized common people who are in majority okay because majority is basically disorganized unorganized you can say or fragmented okay so this is what you can talk about the gaetano mosca here this view that even in democracy okay it even in democracy over a period of time a small group of minority people who called elites start ruling over the uh, you can say majority population this view was also you can say supported by gaetano mosca view was also supported by robert michel who coined the concept of iron law of oligarchy i'm sorry iron law of oligarchy and here what he did uh, to support the you know mosca's view 
he did a study in you know europe of socialist party and particularly the party called spd party in germany spd party i'm not going to detail of spd what is the full form of spd that is not required because a very complex term because written in uh, you know german uh, terminology so just remember spd spd party in uh, germany and there he came to the conclusion that you know there is a uh, development of dominant elite at the top of the organization over a certain period of time okay there is a development of dominant elites in the organization over the certain period of time okay so elites will eventually come into force okay elites will eventually come into force and they develop in the society and they develop not only in any kind of society but they develop even in democratic or socialist society who talks about or who propounds the concept of uh, you know equality equality of everyone right so if we talk about you know iron law of oligarchy oligarchy basically means what ruled by some you know small group of people so when you say iron law of oligarchy what happens is that you can say that over a period of time there is a tendency for political party to become uh, you can say bureaucratic and concentrate power in the hands of few so iron law of oligarchy in a nutshell means tendencies tendency to uh, to convert or basically to develop you can say develop only tendency tendency to develop bureaucratic organization within political party where there is concentration of power in the hands of few there is concentration of power in hands of few in few hands okay so this is what robert michel iron law of oligarchy is and how this uh, you know in order to know more that how this classical elite theory is different from the normal elite theory given by c w mills how it is different from you know pluralist theory how it is different from functionalist theory you know all these things are you know discussed in lot of detail in our sociological you know sociology foundation course that you can join because i'll be talking in detail about everything how this classical elite theory given by wilfred pareto and Goya, you know gaetano mosca have been criticized by various you know sociologists or the thinkers okay so now uh, you can join our sociology foundation course because we are providing this course at a very very you know a uh, nominal cost where we will be giving you very detailed lecture for each and every topic for uh, you know for both paper 1 as well as paper 2 apart from that thing we will be also giving you uh, you know paper 1 paper 2 separate notes and 8 years solved pyq book okay so thank you and all the best